In this T's math example, we're going to solve another quadratic equation. We're going to use the square root method, but this example is a little bit more challenging. Before diving into this one, look at the one before this. It worked out a lot nicer. And also just like the example from yesterday, this example is similar to one that I did in live session number one. But diving into this example, we're gonna follow some of the same steps as yesterday. Looking at our left-hand side, everything over here is getting squared and we need to get rid of that squared. We can't do anything with this stuff in here until we do that. And I mentioned yesterday, just like the opposite of adding is subtracting, the opposite of multiplying is dividing, the opposite of squaring is to take the square root. And notice we took the square root of both sides. The point of us doing this is that the square root cancels out the square, just like yesterday. But this is where things start to get a little bit different. Yesterday's example right here, we had a 25. And when we took the square root of 25, we got plus or minus five down here. I purposely used just a five at the beginning and the square root of five is not a nice number. It's like two point something. And more than likely you're not going to be told to round. So essentially we're not changing anything here. And by us not using the decimal here, this is called exact form. It's exact, there's no rounding. I know this looks weird, but this is how you commonly see it when the square root of this number is a funky decimal. Let's leave the square root of five there, but don't forget the plus or minus just like yesterday. And speaking of this plus or minus, this breaks it up into two two equations. We have x plus four is equal to the positive square root of five. And then we have this x plus four here equal to the negative square root of five. We will subtract four from both sides, but do not subtract the four from this five. That number inside of that radical, we cannot subtract four from that. So here's what it looks like. Notice we have the x by itself. And I did mention that we're gonna subtract four from both sides. And again, we cannot subtract four from that five. So we're just gonna write negative four, which is that subtract four, and this was a positive square root of five, so we have plus square root of five. And over here, the only difference, we're still subtracting four from both sides, but this was the minus square root of five. But notice there is a lot in common here, and that's why I'm bringing up this other way that you commonly see it written. Notice these two solutions have a lot in common, and the only difference is that plus versus that minus. So our final answer to solution still is negative four plus or minus the square root of five. And here's something to leave you with. If we actually take negative four plus the square root of five and negative four minus the square root of five, if we substitute that back into this equation up here, when you do that, this negative four and this positive four, they cancel out. That leaves you with just the square root of five inside of here. And if you take the square root of five and you square it, guess what you get? Five is equal to five. So it does check out, we're checking our work. And very similar, negative four minus the square root of five, the same thing happens, and it is worth mentioning. Negative square root of five, you square all of that, you get five over here. That is why we have two solutions to this equation.